Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Christopher Allen, KW4CDA, and he has an interesting question. Now, his question is quite long, so um, I'm going to go through the question, and as we go through it, I'll try to provide some uh, answers or at least responses to uh, the things that he talks about. Now, before we jump into that, I'd like to pay special thanks to Gene Fish. Gene is a new patron. He has gone to patreon.com slash ke0og and signed up to become a monthly patron of this channel. You too can do that by going to that same website. So let's take a look at this question. It says, hi Dave, I want to start by thanking you for your great content. Thank you. When I got my Tech General licenses, it was due mostly to your training materials and some ARRL library books. I recently built a cheap QRP kit. There are quite a few. QRP means low power. Um, most of those are CW, but not all. Some have voice. Okay, I recently built a cheap QRP kit primarily for the learning experience. He's now working on his extra class, but also because I want some HF capability, but don't have the money for a bells and whistles transceiver. Um, a good transceiver, uh, if you are truly cash limited, uh, you would start with either the ICOM 518 or the Yesu FT450. I've heard very good things about the 450 and it's not that expensive. Now the reference station is the ICOM 7300. You'll spend an extra $500 for it over the 450, but it is a superb little unit. It's a great unit for a starter and you'll grow into its additional features as uh, you are in ham radio more often. It is also a full 100 watt radio, which makes things a lot easier than a QRP radio but QRP radios can be made to work. Okay. Um, I got into ham radio because of emergency comms, and that's still where my focus is, hence the nature of my questions. I am trying to create a base station setup that covers numerous bands and types of radio talk pads. Well, they're too basic, HF and on the one side and VHF, UHF on the other. Most people, not all, uh, keep their stations separated that way. In the case of my station here, I've got a UHF, VHF rig right here. Um, and down here, I've got the ICOM uh, 7300 for HF and 6 meters. Okay, I have antenna switches on both, so I can choose the antenna I want. And uh, it's a very nice, very satisfactory setup. And you can do it like that, too. Okay, I would like to know the best practice for running multiple coax lines and various types of antennas in close proximity to each other. First of all, let's start out with this. You can run coax lines together. Okay, the energy is entirely inside the coax, so you can run the two together. And um, so... Can I run four or five coax lines in a single bundle, perhaps through a single conduit, buried just under the ground surface to prevent tripping hazards and facilitate easy mowing? Yes. Now, a number of lines are rated for direct burial, um, and some aren't. So look for the line, uh, even within a type like an RG213. There will be some rated for direct burial and others not. Uh, or you could put them through a conduit, but know that the conduit will eventually, no matter how hard you try, will fill with water. Okay, so uh, you're going to have to um, make sure that there are no nicks or cuts because the, the outside of the cable is waterproof until it gets nicked or cut. Okay, these lines are anticipated to be used as following. Two for a 25 watt VHF UHF with either a J pole quarter wave ground plane or a Yagi, a vertical dipole. Oh, Yagi. Okay, 
fine. Note that for FM, you want vertical polarization. And it uh, depends on whether or not you need gain to get where you're going. Um, otherwise, you're going to end up putting a rotator on that uh, Yagi if you use that. Uh, vertical dipole for CB, okay. And hopefully something in the GR, GMRS spectrum, um, which is limited to 20 or 25 watts. It's, it's not very much. It's easy to do. My 40 meter QRP is set up with an NVIS dipole, which I plan on mounting away from this particular configuration, pole tower configuration, about 45 to 50 feet away from my ham shack. Okay, you don't have to go that far. VHF and 40 meters just don't get in each other's way very much. Okay, so yeah, I'll put a little bit of spacing, but you don't really need a huge amount. Okay, now, um, is there anything else helpful to know as far as antenna segregation to avoid future problems? Nothing is anticipated to exceed 25 watts output. You will eventually, believe me. But I would also like to make sure that I don't paint myself into a corner if I ever go big. You know, I recommend um, taking a good hard look in investing in a 100-watt uh, HF radio. Um, the, you know, the, the least expensive one of those that I see the best reviews of is the Yesu FT450. It's a much older radio. It's been around for a long time. It works really well. The people who like it really like it. Um, I would almost go to, so far as to say it's a cult radio with a gathering built around that radio that seems to really like it. So uh, there you go. It's, it's a radio a lot of people like. I like the, um, this one here because it has more capabilities and will satisfy you longer than another radio, although a number of people have been with the FT450 for a very long time. So you can also go to my webpage, dcastler.com slash reference to look at a, a complete list of all the equipment you need for a reference 100 watt station. And you can pick and choose from there what you might want, but there's suggestions, things that you could buy. If you put that whole package together, you would end up with a radio that you'll be satisfied with for several years. And then maybe at some point, if you find yourself doing a lot of contesting, you'll buy a contesting radio, like the ICOM 7610 or whatever. Okay, whatever works out. Now, um, as far as keeping VHF, UHF away from HF, it's not that big a problem. They're quite different from each other, and the front ends of those radios will tend to filter each other out so you won't have that kind of an issue. You can run coax line together. Now, watch Ask Dave number eight on grounding and follow that, okay? Because that grounding is probably gonna help you more than anything as far as keeping the noise levels down. So there you have it. Um, if you have been watching this video this far, I urge you to uh, subscribe and like and also support the channel. You can go to decastler.com slash support to look for a way that works for you. And until we next meet, 73.